Welcome to Elevate, the masterclass where we dissect the elements of exceptional achievement and lifestyle design with a focus on personal growth and real estate investing. Now, here's your host, Tyler Chesser. Elevate Nation, welcome back. This is Tyler Chesser. I'm so thankful to have you here and I'm blessed and grateful to be sitting with Ryan McKenna. Ryan, how are you? I'm doing great, Tyler. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing great. You know, it's funny before the show, we're sitting here talking about, you know, all the all the different challenges we're facing personally and, and in the world as a whole. Maybe we we almost solved the world's problems, but maybe not quite. But what do you think about that, Ryan? <laughs> uh, we made some good progress. Uh, it That's might not right. get solved uh, today, but uh, we're, we're definitely cracking away at it. <laughs> yeah, at least by the end of the week, we've got it all handled. So uh, I, I think we can do it by then, yeah. I like it. So maybe by the end of the show, we'll solve some other problems. We'll create some new opportunities. That's for sure. But uh, I want to welcome Elevate Nation back because it's absolutely time to take it to another level. We're going to be doing that today because I want to welcome you back to the show where our mission is to identify and apply how the best of the best raise the bar personally and professionally to achieve greatness in real estate and beyond. And of course, you know that this show is all about learning about the mindset, the habits, the routines, the systems, the tools, the strategies, and so much more from an individual like Ryan McKenna so that you can elevate to a life without limits yourself. And I really believe that that's possible through investing in real estate, through investing in your own personal growth and your own constant and never ending improvement. Uh, because those two forces are some of the most powerful forces in the world. And obviously, when you layer over, uh, you know, the compound effect of continuing to show up on a daily basis and the compound effect of what you can do through real estate, obviously, you know, there's really no limits. And so that's what we're all about on this show. This is a masterclass for leaders and those looking to achieve uncommon results and purposeful outcomes through real estate investing and ultimately in their lives. If you appreciate what we're doing on the show, it'd certainly be grateful if you subscribe to the show, if you gave us a rating a review, a five-star rating if you're so inclined. It certainly helps us. Our goal is to reach this message to millions of people. You know, I know, Ryan, you probably agree with me on this, but I know that when I started my professional career, I was kind of riding that corporate ladder and it was like, man, most of the people around me were tolerating their life. They were tolerating, you know, what they had to go through and, and the lifestyle that they had to live. And I'm not saying that that's, you know, incorrect for everyone, but I can tell you that there's a life of fulfillment. There's a life of happiness and joy and abundance on the other side of fear, uncertainty, you know, and growth. And I can tell you that I've found that. And I believe Ryan, you, you would probably agree that we found that through real estate and through investing in yourself. So that's what this show is all about. And um, let's reach that message to more people. Is there anything you'd say on that, Ryan? Well, you know, it's, I look at life as a journey and then, you know, you, there's a lot of different, um, you know, phases we go through, but I think going after, you know, your dreams, your passions. And then, you know, for me, it was getting into real estate and, and seeing how that has opened up and changed my lifestyle and, and having more time with my family and being able to do things that maybe I couldn't do cause I didn't have the flexibility before. And so, um, yeah, I'm a big believer and, um, you know, going and, and, and chasing your dreams and trying to design, you know, a purposeful life that is meaningful to you and others. And there's a lot of different ways that you can do that and achieve it. Uh, but certainly, I think we've found common ground in, in real estate. So uh, that's, that's pretty cool. Absolutely. So with that said, I want to introduce the audience here to Ryan McKenna, who is a full-time real estate investor, syndicator, and the founder of McKenna Capital, a private equity company that helps people invest passively in real estate syndications. Focusing on value add, multifamily, self storage, and manufactured home parks, McKenna Capital has helped hundreds of investors around the country to invest in commercial real estate assets, totaling over 10,000 units with an asset value just north of $1 billion. So obviously, Ryan, you've got a tremendous amount of experience and obviously, you know, you bring, you know, your unique background to the table and obviously connect folks to opportunities and, um, you know, would love to learn about sort of where does the drive come from, you know, because you, you're you just strike me as the type of individual who is always striving for excellence. Where does that come from? You know, I would say uh, it's something that, uh, you know, at an early age, I just had always wanted to you know, achieve certain things and, and just really strive for, for excellence and success. And I think, uh, yeah, a lot of that w was modeled off of, you know, having a vision for what I, you know, what I want to do in life and how I want to live life. And I think I, I, I've always, my wife always says, you know, I need to do a better job living in the present because I'm always thinking of the future and my goals and how I'm going to get there. But that's just always how I've thought, even at a young age. And um, I've just kind of tried to set the bar high. And, um, you know, I'm a big believer in, in you know, what, what the, 
the mind can conceive and believe you can achieve. And so that's just been kind of just how I've, I've looked at different things in my life. And, um, it's really, you know, allowed me to, to, to have a fun journey. Uh, nothing's ever perfect, but, um, it, you know, I've tried to set high goals and, and once you achieve those, then you, 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 you adjust and, and make them even, you know, even harder and more challenging. And I think, um, you know, not everyone achieves everything you, you want, but it's the journey and the process that, that is a lot of fun. And, um, you know, I, I think at an early age, what my first big uh, goal was, uh, to play baseball in college. That was something that, uh, I just, I, I loved, um, striving to try to put myself in a position to play, um, you know, division one baseball, uh, and specifically at Arizona state. I, I recall a moment when I, I think it was 12 years old. I drew a picture of myself, you know, playing center field and I, and around it, I had ASU and just all the thing. I had my workout right next to it, all the things I was doing at a young age. And I didn't really know like that it would happen. I just said, oh, you know, I'm going to work as hard as I can and I'm going to give myself, um, you know, shot to be in a position that maybe I could go play at a, at a you know, kind of a high caliber program like, like Arizona State. And I just day in and day out, just just kept chipping away, working at it and, and learning and trying to get better and then eventually put myself in a position and then um, actually fulfilled one of my dreams early on to, to play baseball at Arizona State. And so I think that kind of set the stage for how I look at things. Cause that was a very audacious goal. Um, you know, when they can kind of handpick who they want to, to recruit and, uh, you know, a kid from Elgin, Illinois that, you know, how, how is he even getting that opportunity? I just, I think I really started to believe that, wow, like I could do things in life that maybe others felt like, I couldn't or that they just didn't think were possible. So I've tried to take that mindset through, through business now and, and just my life in general. So, um, yeah, that, that's kind of just been my, my, my take on, uh, maybe, maybe I was born a little bit with the personality of just trying to just think that you could do everything and then realizing you can't, but that as long as you get back up and you, you keep fighting, maybe you can claw your way to, um, you know, to, 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 to your goals and your dreams. And, um, and that's just kind of just been my personal story. That's awesome. And it's like, it's almost like you were born with this inherent vision that you, you know, you, you made your dreams a reality where you're even describing there where you were kind of drawing out sort of the baseball with Arizona state logo on it. Is that right? I mean, you're, yeah. I mean, I can recall even when I was in school, like I would be drawing pictures of like, um, like a house like that I wanted someday that like and I would just like design it and I'd just be like just kind of spacing off but it was like I put that into action too it wasn't just like oh hey I want to dream big and then you know maybe I'll win the lottery it was like no I was dreaming big but then I also had a purpose and I think the visualization kind of set in motion you know um just the process that would follow I mean I didn't have a set you know process and, and the steps all laid out but just having that vision, my mind kind of went there. And along the way, I would pick up things that would really help me get closer to that goal. And so I felt like as long as I was moving forward, making progress, I was able to achieve a lot of different things that I, in life that I wanted, um, just because I was focused and disciplined once I kind of knew, you know, the direction I wanted to head in. Mm -hmm. So what do you think is the difference between folks that, you know, put their dreams into action and those that just dream and never make them happen? I mean, out of curiosity, what would you say is the difference between the ones who actually make it happen and those who just continue to dream and, you know, never get there? Yeah, I mean, I, it, well, I would say it'd be frustrating to, 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 you know, want something and then just to not be able to feel like you're moving forward towards it. Um, but at the same time, I'd have to look myself in the mirror and be like, well, that's on me for, for not trying or not working hard enough. Um, and just because you work hard enough doesn't mean that you're going to ultimately achieve everything. But I, I think, you know, it, it's that effort that you put into it. And that, that is fulfilling in a way when you're trying to strive for something. And even if you don't reach your goal, I mean, you're going to achieve many along the way that you didn't even maybe even think about uh, initially. And I think you're just going to have a more fulfilling life. So I, I'm a big believer in just taking action. And as long as you're, you know, you're showing up and you're present and you're trying to do the right things, I mean, good things are going to happen along the way. It's, uh, I don't know, it, it'd be, it'd be frustrating to, to, you know, to be in a world where you just, you know, you think all this good stuff's going to happen, but then you just don't take any action because nothing, nothing really is going to happen unless you get lucky or someone comes into your life and it just, you know, gives you what you want. Uh, but that to me would get old after a while. I think there's, there's something that 
is very rewarding about putting in the hard work and the effort um, and, and, and achieving something that maybe was, you know, outside of your limits of what you initially thought. Uh, it's pretty cool when that happens because uh, you just feel like you're just expanding your mind and your, your capability as, as, a, as a human. And, uh, and then to be able someday to try to help others is, um, you know, that's pretty fulfilling. This episode of Elevate is brought to you by CF Capital a real estate investment firm that focuses on acquiring and operating multifamily assets that provide stable cash flow, capital appreciation, and a margin of safety. Our team, including yours truly, leverages its expertise in acquisitions and management to provide investors with superior risk-adjusted returns while placing a premium on preserving capital. Our mission is to provide property investment and asset management solutions to help investors maximize their returns by investing in high value multifamily communities. To learn more about future opportunities, visit cfcapllc.com. Again, that's cfcapllc.com. Yeah. And you said something earlier that what the mind can conceive and, and believe it can achieve. And I totally resonate with that. I know that that's a Napoleon Hill thinking <laughs> a rich quote because, yep. you know, it's so interesting is because it is about thinking. It is about planting those seeds. It is about visualizing the outcome. And then no doubt it's about putting into, it into action and picking up, you know, those things along the way and those, those clues. It's almost like when you have that visualization of what your end result is, you know, you start to find the resources that can get you there. Was that your experience along that path and, and perhaps even along your path for business as well? Yeah, it was. Cause I would always seek out, like I never got jealous of other people who were better than me, who were more successful than me. I just wanted to hang around them and learn from them. I mean, that's how I view what I do today and what I did back then when I uh, was trying to, um, you know, compete in baseball and get better. It's like I wanted to, to play against people that were better than me because that's how I was going to get better. And so I embraced that. And uh, that's why I chose to go to a school like Arizona State. I knew it was going to be very challenging to, to break into the lineup and to play because they're getting the best, you know, talent from across the country. But that experience was going to elevate me to a level that like, I never thought, you know, um, you know, I'd actually really be in. And, and here I was playing against some of the best competition in the country. And it just made me better as a, you know, as a teammate, as a person. And I've taken a lot of those, those skills into the business world. And so I continue to keep pushing myself to keep evolving, keep learning, keep getting better. And so I would say at this point, it's almost seems natural to me because I've just been, it's just been drilled into me for so long and it, I don't even really have to think about it. It's just, I'm naturally drawn to people who are doing things that maybe I want to do someday and I enjoy hanging around them and learning from them. And I'm also curious. I, I love to hear how someone started a business or came up with an idea. I mean, that that's type of story is fascinating to me because it's, it's like someone is, you know, fulfilling a, a dream or an idea or, or a thought that, um, they, that they put into action. And, and I just, I love to hear, um, you know, how they did it and, uh, and the impact it's, it's now making on their life. And so, um, so that's just kind of been what's really motivated me is being around others that are trying to do the same thing. I love it. And I know that you just mentioned there, maybe you even plugged it for the show, the experience elevated you. And it is interesting how that when you place yourself in a bit of uncomfortable positions, when it, uh, positions of growth, you get elevated and the people around you who are perhaps at a place where you want to be, they elevate you to the next level or to, you know, closer to perhaps where they are. You pick up on their skills, you pick up on their habits, their routines, you know, who they are as an individual, their identity perhaps becomes a part of your identity. So I think it's just so powerful what you're saying. And I'd love to kind of fast forward a bit. I mean, as you, where you've been now, and obviously you've built a substantial real estate portfolio, you've gotten quite involved across really the country. And I'd love to know, I mean, what was that tra trajectory like and how did you get there? And, and uh, tell us a little bit about that and how did vision play a role in that? Yeah. So at an early, uh, say early two thousands is when, um, you know, multifamily syndication really kind of came into my world and it was actually a, a teammate of mine at uh, Arizona state. His father was an apartment syndicator. And so, I got to talking um, you know, after a game uh, one, one night about uh, you know what his business was all about, and that's when I really learned about um, a syndication and, and pooling capital together to buy these large apartments. And at the same time, uh, Robert Kiyosaki's uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad book came out, so it was kind of like, wow, I had this blueprint from this book about um, you know buying these assets and cash flow, and just you know I had like kind of a, a process that I could follow, but then I had this 
person over here who was doing it in real life. And that was someone that I gravitated towards that I, I wanted to, you know, learn as much as I could and, and who became like a mentor to me over the years. And so that's really how I got introduced and, and, and uh, learned about it. But it took me many years before I kind of had some of the capital to really start investing. Um, I, I started in 2006 with some single family rentals, just like most kind of dipping their toes into, into the, the real estate investing world. Uh, but I quickly learned that that wasn't going to allow me to scale to the level that I wanted to get to. And that uh, eventually I wanted to get into multifamily syndication and do um, you know, what my mentor was doing. And so um, a lot of that happened, uh, you know, it started to happen in 2016 when I started investing personally into a lot of these uh, syndications. Um, and after I got into about 12 different investments, and I just started to see the, the benefits uh, of myself personally being able to invest for the cash flow, um, you know, the capital appreciation, the tax benefits. I started sharing what I was doing with other people in my network and uh, friends, family, coworkers, and they were really interested as well. And that's kind of when the light bulb went off. It was like, wow, you know, like I'm doing something I'm super passionate about that I absolutely believe in. But how do I help others? Because I didn't really necessarily have, a, you know, a vehicle at the time. I was just personally investing on the side. And then uh, that's when I said, you know, I got to get into the syndication business. I got to find a way to help, um, you know, bring these opportunities to other people who are just like me that want to, you know, achieve the same goals and maybe have a little more flexibility in their life and, um, you know, and, and, and want to, you know, participate in these types of investments. And so that's when I started McKenna Capital. And uh, things just, you know... I, kind of took off. I mean, I spent uh, 15 years building relationships and, and, you know, what might look like in a few years, you know, happened overnight. It didn't. I mean, it was 15, 20 years of, of building relationships just along the way in, in life and business and um, in baseball. And uh, I was able to tap into that when I had, you know, some really good opportunities and I was able to share that through a pretty big, you know, platform just that I developed. And so, yeah, things really, really took off and it's been a fun ride. I've enjoyed every minute of it. Uh, I feel like this is kind of what I w was meant to do. I, it's just something I, I get up every morning. I'm energized. I, I could talk about it all day long and uh, I really enjoy you know, the lifestyle it's given me and my family to be able to have that flexibility. Um, you know, some people say, you know, lifestyle by design. I'm finally living that and it, and it feels awesome to be able to wake up every day and, and kind of, you know, decide what you want to do. I mean, I, I'm, I like to work hard. I'm very busy, but you know, if I want to take the time to, you know, teach my three-year-old how to ride a bike, I'm going to go do that, you know, and I, I don't have to really answer to anyone and my schedule set up the way it needs to be. And even with COVID right now and what the environment we're going through, I, I don't know what's going to happen, but at least I feel like I'm in a position that I can adapt and adjust and, and get through it. Um, and yes, we'll have stressful moments, but I don't have the, the, the added stress of, of being on someone else's schedule and time. And, and um, that part to me is, is super important. And I, I feel like, you know, I did it through investing on the side while I was in the corporate world. And that's maybe a different path uh, than, than, than most would, would see, but I was able to do it. And, uh, you know, financially through all the investments had enough cash flow coming in that I could walk away. And, and, uh, and so that's really what I'm trying to help others, uh, you know, today as well, just to see that there's, there's other ways to do it out there. And, um, you know, it's been fun to kind of help people along their journey as well. And, and, uh, and it's, it's a great space to be in. And I've met so many people like yourself who's in it as well. And, and just, I, I think, uh, you know, from an education standpoint, everyone's very willing to help and, um, it's, it's, it's just fun to see us all grow together. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so awesome. And it's so inspiring, you know, just to think back on your journey in terms of recognizing the opportunity when, you know, a friend of yours, or perhaps even a teammate even started speaking about the opportunities through real estate, and then picking up rich dad, poor dad, and obviously being open to the opportunities and the journey that may lie ahead and also being patient and recognizing that you're investing in long-term relationships and a long-term understanding of a long-term business because it's not a get-rich-quick scheme. It's not any of that, but it is you know, a get-wealthy-for-sure 
over time, if you do the right thing, if you allow the compound effect to be at play. And so I just find, you know, there to be so much value in your story. And I also find it interesting that you started, you know, obviously with single family homes, as many real estate investors kind of get started on their journey and recognize, hey, this is not really going to get me where I want to go. And then started to really get a feel for what does the syndication model look like? And what does this look like for me as a passive investor, as a bit busy professional? And obviously that's as you've compounded that, given you, you know, the fi- financial independence that you speak of and you, you mentioned is even the holy grail of personal finance, which I love that. And I, I totally agree uh, yeah. because I, I was, it's so funny. I was on a podcast yesterday, someone else's podcast, and they asked me, what's the worst investing advice you've ever been given? And I, I thought of it and I said, you know what? I think it's, it's when a financial inv- advisor asks you, when do you want to retire? Because to me, that's not inspiring. How about when do I want to have financial independence or financial freedom or financial abundance? And then I can choose what I do with my time because then I can plug in like you and be busy, but still be fulfilled and be excited and still get to be with my family and the people that I care about and, and, you know, experience those things and go travel and do whatever. So anyway, I'll get off my soapbox here, but talk to me a little bit about, um, you know, passive investing and, and what do you see, what, what really separates sort of the most successful passive investors versus you know, those who perhaps don't reach a level of success through passive investing? Yeah, I would say for me, my philosophy has always been like, I, I want to have money in motion. I want to have it working for me when I'm doing something else. And I've never been one that's like, oh, well, I just got to find the perfect investment opportunity or the, the perfect time to invest because I, I take an approach, a, you know, I, I want to diversify the investments I'm, I'm making. So not only in real estate, um, you know, I've, I've done some other investments, uh, other syndications as well, but at the end of the day, I'm looking for me myself to build out my own, let's just call it like a private equity real estate portfolio. And, and a lot of investors out there, I think, you know, try to do that as well. Um, so I'm looking for a blended return. You know, I realize that, you know, different deals are going to perform, you know, better than others. And this is a long-term horizon. So I'm not going to get hung up like a stock where, you know, it goes up and down and it's very volatile. I mean, this is a long-term play for me. So for me, it was just about like getting started and, and having that money start to work for me because, you know, you start small and you just, you got to take, let kind of, time take its course because a lot of these deals you need to go through a few years of then starting to realize some of the capital events like a a refinance or an exit. So the cash flow is great, but really when you can start combining that with, you know, the ability to have one investment maybe grow into another because you got a really nice cash out refi. Now you've got, you know, two investments that are, that are coming from one and that's where it gets fun long-term because it starts to snowball and then you just keep it, you know, it's, it's like rinse and repeat. You just keep doing it over and over again. And I, I feel like um, I've done a good job diversifying um, not only with um, you know, different um, operators, but just with different um, geographies, um, I've invested about 15 different markets um, and then take that one step further, um, you know, different asset classes. So not everything's all in multifamily. We've done self storage, we've done mobile home parks, done ATMs, we did litigation funding. I mean, there's a lot of really cool investments, but they all have a similar theme where it's really about the cash flow because that really, um, especially in this environment, it, it, is what matters a lot if you're living off of a lot of your passive income. Um, and, and then you still have you know, the upside uh, if you're focused in, say, value add where, you know, you're going to be able to create some value in the, in the, um, in the investments. Um, but then again, the, the tax benefits are, that's, that's like icing on the cake here with, with everything because you actually, if you're making the transition from the corporate world and you're going to live off your investments, you don't have to make as much money because you're keeping a lot more um, through these real estate uh, syndications because of the way, you know, depreciation works and, and, you know, accelerated depreciation. So uh, that was one thing that I was, you know, looking at as I was going to make make the, the shift. I didn't have to have the high income initially that I had before because, you know, I was given 50% of my, you know, what I was making to the government here, you know, you're, you're, you're keeping a lot more than that. And, you know, the, the government incentivizes you to make these types of investments because you are, you know, enhancing and, and building, you know, the, these communities up. And so there's, there's a value that, you know, you're creating to society for that. And that, that feels good um, as well as, you know, being able to make some money um, through those investments too. 
Yeah, I think that's one of the things that folks, you know, really kind of gloss over a lot is the tax benefits. And especially even as a passive investor, those those tax benefits are are really kind of, you know, pulled through or pushed through to you through your K-1. And, through, you know, those opportunities are phenomenal and it cannot be overstated. Um, and so I just think it's so important to really make a mention of that. But also, you know, thinking about sort of building your path to financial independence, um, you know, as a busy professional. And obviously, many of the folks listening today are busy professionals and they're thinking, hey, you know what, this real estate thing, obviously, it sounds super exciting, sounds super interesting. I just don't have the time. I don't know how I'm going to, you know, go out and find a fourplex or find an aplex or, you know, 12 units or whatever. And so they're starting to say, Hey, wait a minute, passive investing, this sounds pretty interesting. So what's the best path? I mean, you mentioned obviously diversification in terms of markets, in terms of operators, you know, where, where should someone start when they've, you know, learned that passive investing is an opportunity for them to, you know, build a path towards financial independence. Where, where would you start? So I would start, I mean, obviously I think first and foremost, it's, it's all about educating yourself on um, just kind of what, what the, the lay of the land looks like. And, and I can tell you just like, um, just like this medium here, this podcast. I mean, I, when I first started, I, I was listening to podcasts daily. Just, I wanted to, to get as much Intel as I could. And, and through those podcasts, you learn, you know, about other people who are doing what, what you want to be doing. And you learn about, you know, the, these types of deals in different markets and, and over time, you know, through books, blogs, podcasts, I mean, you start to really feel like, wow, you know, I, I'm gaining a lot of information. I feel like, um, you know, I can do this. But then the most critical step is to actually take action on it. You know, you could be studying your whole life to, to you know, to, to get as much knowledge, but if you never do anything with it, it's, it's kind of pointless. Um, so eventually you got to make that, that leap into actually doing it because then you're going to learn along the way and you're going to, you know, you're going to make mistakes, but I, I look at this as like, again, it's long-term. I'm going to be in different investments and not everyone's going to, you know, work out the way I, I, I hoped it would, but you know, you, you do enough research, you, you take action, you just surround yourself with good people. And then, um, you know, from there, you, you're going to open yourself up because once you get in it, you're going to know who the players are. You're going to know how to, you know, evaluate a deal. You're going to know kind of some of the metrics on the, on the markets, what's important, like, you know, the population and job growth. Um, but if you take a diversified approach, you don't have to necessarily go in with like, I got to find the absolute best deal and the best partner from day one. You can kind of go in it with like, Hey, I'm going to probably make a series of investments and I'm going to divide it up, you know, based upon here's what I got to invest. And I, maybe I'll do it over a period of time. So you don't have to feel like you have to get it absolutely 100% right. Cause I think, um, a, a good quote I, I live by is, Wayne Gretzky, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, right? You never take a shot, you never invest, you'll never know. And so I'd much rather, you know, take those calculated risks and put my, my capital to work with good people that I know, like, and trust. And, and, and it's worked for me and it's worked for many others. Um, and I, I think that approach, um, you know, is, is going to be something long-term that, that most will benefit from. Um, but yeah, obviously you got to do your diligence. This is your money. It's, it's something that you got to feel comfortable with. Um, but through syndications, you also are, you know, putting your capital into someone else's deal that they're going to manage, you know, and operate. And so, uh, you're, but you're giving it to an expert. Whereas on the flip side, if you're trying to go out and buy your own rental, I mean, you're now the, the part-time expert who has a full-time job taking on a lot of liability, a lot of risk. And I went down that path and I just, you know, the, the headaches, uh, I made way less money than I thought I was going to make. Um, and, and it just, it didn't get me to where I needed to be, but I think I, you know, I had to go through that experience to kind of know. Um, so yeah, the syndication model, I mean, it opens up a whole new world. I mean, you can invest all across the country um, and, and you truly are a passive investor, but you reap all the same benefits as if you did it yourself. And so that part is pretty cool. And um, I, I, again, I, the biggest probably takeaway I could say is, uh, you know, go seek out someone who's doing what you want to do or what you think you want to do and just try to learn and then, and then take action. Yeah. One of the, one of the kind of mantras that I love, and I think even the real estate guys, you know, Russ Gray and, and Robert Helms, they even mentioned it, education for effective action. So at the end of the day, what is education if it isn't for effective action? You should be taking action on what you learn. So if you're listening to the show, pause it and go find somebody and, and do a deal and, and go out there and take action. Um, Cause I do think that you learn so much just by participating and you learn, 
you know, just through the process. And obviously you want to be educated before you take action because that's where, you know, big mistakes happen is when you're not educated and when you're not properly informed, but also understanding that who you're working with is properly educated and informed and experienced and, you know, they're doing the right thing. There's somebody that you can trust. So uh, with all that said, you know, I'd just be curious how you guys are adapting right now. Um, just in this environment, obviously we've got a, a quite an interesting set of circumstances on our hands and past 10 years have been, you know, a bit of a run up from our last uh, market correction. And, um, you know, maybe there's, maybe there's been a market correction in some sectors of the economy, but how are you guys looking at it today? As far as multifamily goes, um, are you adapting? And if so, you know, what does that look like? Yeah, we, we are adapting to kind of the, this new normal and, um, yeah, no one ever saw this, this coming and COVID is, uh, yeah, I, I think, made us all take a little, little bit of a pause here to kind of assess, you know, what, 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 what we're dealing with and then what this looks like going forward. Uh, but I believe, you know, we're still very, you know, we're cautiously optimistic here because uh, I, I think prior, you know, to, well, at the early onset, we thought things might be a lot worse than what they actually are. Um, so there's this kind of this over-preparedness of like, hey, worst case scenario. I think it was good exercise to go through to help us, you know, look at all different angles uh, and, and just be prepared so that if something like this, um, you know, happens again, I know we're not through it right now, but I'm sure there will be something down the road. At least we're, we're now all more prepared. Um, but one of the reasons why I really liked investing in, in multifamily was, you know, the resiliency that that asset class has in a downturn. Uh, it's a, able to weather the storm fairly well because um, at, at its core, I mean, it's, it's, it's a basic human need to have shelter. So I look at that as like, well, that was one of the reasons that was attractive to me in the first place. I didn't know a pandemic was going to happen, but like, you know, you look at other asset classes like retail and hospitality and, and it's a, it's a much different story. Um, so even though that, you know, the deal flow has slowed down, uh, people are more cautious, you know, when I take a, a step back and I look at the investing landscape out there, I mean, things could be far worse. I mean, if I was in a different business or made different investments. So even if multifamily, um, let's just say the returns are, I don't know, uh, you know, maybe not what they were a few years ago. I mean, it's maybe they're a few percentage points down or, you know, we have to be even more conservative with rent growth. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, in my opinion, it's still a pretty solid investment compared to what the alternative is. I mean, if the alternative is hold on to your money, don't do anything. I mean, I, I think, you know, long-term, that's not a great strategy. Short-term, yes, you should have an emergency fund. You should be able to fall back on something. But again, it goes back to having that money in motion. I mean, if I sit on the sideline for two, three years to wait for that perfect opportunity, I might've just lost, you know, some very solid opportunities where that money could be compounding and growing. So that, that's a risk that someone, you know, might, be taking if they're they're not participating. Um, so I've never been one to really try to time it out just because, you know, these investments are typically a five year horizon and you're you're along for the ride. So I, I'm a big believer in as long as you're you know kind of in the game and, and you're you're making smart decisions, you're doing your due diligence. Um, you, you know, I, I, I think long term you're gonna you're gonna come out okay. You're gonna be fine. I mean, the one thing you need to factor in as an investor is that these are illiquid opportunities. So you got to know when you make that investment that you know you can't pull it out. Um, so that might be you know a downside uh, on one perspective, but the other perspective is that I think you get rewarded for that because there's not this knee jerk reaction where you get in the stock market where you need to sell something on an emotional decision. I think, you know, in multifamily, if you've got a good deal that cash flows well, it's very, um, you know, conservatively underwritten, you kind of can choose your exit and, you know, you can try to time it up to sell in a really good market and, you know, get rewarded for that. So that's what we're seeing in a lot of our deals. I mean, yes, uh, we've seen distributions, um, you know, either, yeah, been not paid out or maybe cut in half. Uh, but most are still paying. Uh, but at the end of the day, I mean, if that's what we have to do, you know, we preserve capital number one right now in a scenario like this, it's all about the investors and preserving that capital. And so we've had to put some projects on hold, um, and just kind of hunker down and get through this and then we'll, we'll bounce back. And, and so, uh, probably a long way to answer, but I mean, I still, um, you know, I know it's been a great run and, and we're in a recession and we're dealing with a lot here. Um, but I'm actually pretty impressed with how well multifamily has held up. I know our portfolio and just what I hear and see out there, it could be a lot worse. And so I still think, um, you know, 
opportunity, good opportunities are few and far between, but they're still out there. Hey guys, I just wanted to take a brief time out from this show, this incredibly mind expanding discussion to speak to the high achievers, the high performers. I wanted to speak to those who have a burning desire to go to the next level and beyond. First of all, I hear you and I see you. When I got started as a real estate entrepreneur, fresh out of my W2 corporate job, I was excited and jubilant to create and design my future. At the same time, my business and life was filled with confusion, filled with fear, doubt, uncertainty, and to be honest with you, sometimes even sleepless nights and hopelessness, even while experiencing what many would have considered substantial success. Ultimately, I mustered up the courage to hire one of the world's top high-performance business coaches to work directly with me on creating strategies, systems, and profound shifts towards accelerating my multifaceted performance and to become an industry leader. After years of investing significant resources into myself and in my business through this process, I am now paying it forward as a high-performance coach to those who feel called to elevate to the extraordinary. Wherever you are right now, you know deep down that you have it within you to be great. If you're someone who's seriously looking to elevate your business, your real estate portfolio, your cash flow, your deal flow, your network, your net worth, your lifestyle, and ultimately your life right now and ongoing for the rest of your life, I have a message for you. Because if that's you, then I invite you to visit coachwithtyler.com. I have limited coaching spots available to guide people like you who want to substantially close the gap from where you are to where you want to be. These are first come, first serve, and demand high-touch, one-to-one focus from me directly to you. And this is not for everyone. This is only for those who are decisive, committed, and willing to do whatever it takes. It's only for those willing to play full out and invest time, energy, and resources into themselves to achieve greatness in real estate investing and beyond, which is what we're all about on this podcast. This is for those defiantly inspired for transforming as an empowered limitless and unstoppable human being in full control of their and their business's future. If that is you, I invite you to visit coachwithtyler.com. Again, that's coachwithtyler.com where you can apply for this life-changing opportunity. We will then schedule a discovery session where we will directly discuss what's working, not working, and how we can work together to accelerate your future. With that said, enjoy the rest of the show. Yeah. And I love that you've, you've restated money in motion several times, just because it's such a, it's a, it's a great visual and, you know, the compound effect and the growth effect of money in motion is, is a very powerful tool and something that we've all got to recognize on our own path to financial independence or financial freedom or abundance, because it's, uh, you know, it's, Obviously, you know, who, I don't know who mentioned it, but compounding is the most powerful force on the planet. I think it was maybe Albert it's Einstein it's was it either ben? or Ben Franklin, one of the two. Oh, but if it's, been, if it's Ben, I just want to apologize to Ben Franklin because he's like my favorite person in history. So I just yeah. if that was you, Ben, I'm very sorry. Uh, that's my guy, man. Uh, so, you know, one of the things that I think is so important for investors is managing emotions. And like, even in good times and bad, it's like equanimity, you know, so I'd love to know, I mean, is there anything that any sort of principles or any approaches that, that you use to manage your own emotions? Like early on in the pandemic, obviously things were pretty chaotic and everybody's like scrambling, trying to figure out what's the best way and what's happening. What's, is the sky falling or is, is it not? And, you know, how do you manage your own emotions during times of high stress um, to remain measured yourself? Yeah, I, I have to take a step back and, and re- remind myself that you know these are typically a five-year you know hold for, for these investments, and real estate sometimes can be measured in quarters. So just because we're having a bad week or a bad month, in the grand scheme of things, I mean, there's still a long way to go. And so I even have to remind investors of that as well: is that you know there's going to be some bumps along the way, especially in the first year or two as you go through a value add process and you have to you know react or adapt to certain environments. Um, but it's, it's, again, it's a long-term play. And, and if you've set the deal up right where you don't necessarily have to, to sell and you're not in a position where, you know, you don't have, um, I guess time on your side, you know, that's going to be more challenging. But if you do, then, you know, the, really the value of that asset doesn't necessarily matter. And, you know, there's only three, three times it matters when you buy, when you're going to refinance and when you're going to sell anything in between, it just, it can, things can fluctuate, but as long as you can make good decisions and you have this long-term focus and you can really, um, you know, implement the right strategies to, to ride out a storm like this, I think, you know, you're going to be fine. So, I mean, for me, 
I take the emotions out of um, my, all my investments. I've invested in a lot of different things because I take a, you know, a blended uh, diversified approach of what my ex expectations are for a return. And so in my mind, I'm, I'm just trying to target, if I can get a 16% return on my money on an annual basis, long term, I'm going to sleep well at night. And, and that's a number that I think actually is low, very conservative, but like, it's my number that I don't have to stress about, don't have to worry about because I think long-term with the type of deals that I'm investing in and the diversification I have across the board, I mean, if I can hit that, I'm going to be in a great spot and I don't have to worry. And, and, and again, I could have one or two deals that maybe underperform, but if I've got enough that are right at that target or above, I'm going to be fine. So I don't get hung up on, you know, one deal or one situation because again, I'm diversifying into many different investments. And with that approach, it takes away some of the stress because it's not all dependent on, you know, one investment. So, so that old saying, you know, don't put all your eggs in one basket. I mean, that's, that's, I, I really believe in, in, in not doing that. So uh, I try to really diversify for those purposes. And again, I, the assets we're purchasing, uh, you know, if you're buying class B, even class C, and it's, it's a value add. And I mean, these, these deals are profitable from day one. It's not like we're doing a startup or a development and there's a bunch of risk associated with the first few years of not having any revenue or income. So I think we take a lot of that risk off the table. Um, but then again, you still got to be a good asset manager. You still have to, you know, be good at, um, you know, all the renovations and the strategy, but, but at the same time, like, um, you know, the, the cash flow stream associated with, I think is so important. And especially in times like this, it's something that we all can fall back on and, and have some comfort that, um, that, you know, we'll, we'll be okay as long as we can make smart decisions and manage the, you know, the, the property appropriately. Yeah. It always helps to manage your emotions when you know that your strategy is sound and you know that in the long term you will win. And as long as you do the right thing, as long as you partner with the right people, as long as you're diligent, as long as you're ready to adapt and, and be nimble with that, whatever circumstances present themselves, because we all know that a pro forma is a pro forma. It's a projection. And that reality is always different than a projection to a certain degree. So are you willing to be flexible? Are you willing to roll with the punches? And are you willing to play the long game? Because that's what it's all about. And, um, you know, aside from investing, you know, are, are there any conscious habits that you've created for yourself that have served you in terms of, you know, not only developing financial independence, but designing that life that you talked about earlier? Yeah, I would say I go back to the, the visualization. I mean, I'm living the life that I had visualized many years ago. And it feels really good to be able to be in that position because that's what I had worked so hard and what I had, you know, kind of set in my mind uh, and my goals and to be able to be in a position to finally, you know, have that. I mean, it, it's just, it, it's something that had I not wanted that many years ago, my why wouldn't have been so strong because everything I do is, it kind of falls back on, on my family and just the goals that we want to, you know, achieve and the life we want to live. But when you have that burning desire and that why, you'll figure it out. And as long as you surround yourself with good people and, you know, you're, you're willing to, to learn and try to get better every day, I mean, I, I feel like there's these, these forces that kind of that you don't even realize sometimes are kind of pushing you in that direction. And, you know, I think with having a good attitude, working hard, showing up every day and having, you know, a visual, a visualization of what you want in life. I mean, the, the hardest thing is maybe not knowing when you're going to get there. But again, if you enjoy the journey and, and you love the ride, uh, you're going to have fun along the way. And then one day you'll wake up and you'll be like, wow, I, I, I'm here. And then you, then you're going to, you know, then you're going to find the next thing that you want to go chase. And so, um, I, I also have a gratitude journal that every morning I get up and I have a picture that I, I put for each day. And then I write down three things that I, I'm grateful for. And that keeps me very humble. And it also allows me to just appreciate you know, the things in my life that matter most. And it's sometimes the simple things that like, Hey, I, I got to go for a walk with my family today, or uh, I got to help my daughter, um, you know, learn how to ride a bike. And those are the things that, you know, those are the experiences that, you know, uh, that mean more than any amount of money you can make, you know, the ability to have the time to go do that, um, to make those memories. And so be able to reflect on that, I think is important because, as someone that's always thinking ahead into the future and visualizing, you, you got to have a way to take a step back and be grateful and thankful for the things that actually 
do happen in your life that are meaningful and, and the impact you have with others. So, so those are kind of some of the things that I do. Um, and I also try to you know, tackle the hardest things I can early in the morning when my mind is fresh and the thoughts are flowing. And uh, instead of worrying about it, you know, throughout the day, I'd rather just get it done and <laughs> be able to move on. So I, that was something I'd learned, just, you know, tackle the hardest um, task early on. And, and, and then, uh, you know, the rest of the day, you know, hopefully will go a little bit smoother and you'll have a have all that behind you. Yeah, absolutely. No, there's so much value there. And I mean, obviously gratitude is super important. I just wanted to just re-highlight that. I mean, one thing I heard recently and it really resonated and rang true with me is that, you know, in the state of gratitude, you're really in the state of receivership as well, which is really interesting because when you recognize all that you're thankful for, things just start to show up in, in more things that you can be thankful for. So it's so important. And not only for us who are, you know, high achievers and those who are driven to, you know, to do more is to recognize that, hey, look, things that are around us are, are great now too. The circumstances around us are amazing too. And there's many little things to be thankful for. Even if you're in a challenging part of your life or in your business, there's always things that are going well too. So recognizing that and it starts to bring more of that to you. And also just wanted to go kind of circle back on one of the things that you said, but it, it reminded me of the fact that you, we kind of overestimate what we can accomplish in one year, but we drastically underestimate what we can accomplish in a decade. And just so, you know, plugging in and kind of creating these habits really creates that. And, and, it, and, and it's through that vision, it's through, you know, setting those intentions. And so I just think there's so much value in that and also surrounding yourself with the right people. But Ryan, what are you most excited about these days? I mean, what's, what's next for you guys? You know, I, I get really excited. I mean, just the simple things and, and talking to a new investor and, you know, seeing them, you know, kind of visualize or, or understand like, you know, th what they're trying to achieve and, and maybe there's a plan set in motion. I mean, that those are, you know, my goal is to help as many investors as I can to achieve, you know, financial freedom or at least to, you know, build a, um, you know, solid foundation that they have something to fall back on um, should they, they need it or want it someday. And so, um, you know, th there's not a, a set number in my mind. I mean, I want to help as many people as I can, um, but I, I truly enjoy um, what I do day in and day out. And I think for me, it's just, you know, allowing myself to have more time to help others. Um, so I, I think trying to get myself out of a lot of the, you know, the day-to-day -day tasks so I can work on the more of the important stuff with, with the investors and our operating partners and just kind of the, the vision overall for our, for our business as we continue to grow and evolve. Um, so that, that's really kind of, I, I guess, where I would see ourselves um, continuing to, to keep putting effort forward in those areas. I love it. Yeah. And you're, you're just such a giver and such a pre presenter of opportunities with everything that you've done. So I just honor you for that. But uh, Ryan, I just want to transition into our rapid fire section. Uh, we yep. call it the rare air questionnaire. It's all about raising the bar. It's all about being uncommon. It's all about striving for excellence and continuing to improve and continuing to grow and seek new opportunities and, and give that to others as well. So with that said, I've got a few questions here for you. Uh, just curious. I mean, if you were to point to two or three of the most impactful books that you've read, what would those be and why? So one would be, we, we already uh, mentioned it earlier, but Napoleon Hill, Think and Grow Rich. That was a book early on. I've read that book probably 10 times, but I think that really helped with my thoughts and kind of framing like what it is, uh, you know, I wanted or what kind of thoughts I needed to have. And, and I didn't necessarily know at an early age, but it was just the positive thoughts, the belief that, wow, if I put my mind to something, I can achieve it. I mean, that helped me out in many ways, not just with baseball or business, but just in life. And so I think having read that at an early age, there's just something in my subconscious mind that kind of just, you know, you, you wake up, you're already kind of in that mode. And I don't know if it just throughout the years, you know, just kind of happens as you read enough of those books and you just, you, you, your mind starts flowing. And um, so that was really probably one that set the stage early on. And then uh, there's one that's more recent. It's called uh, Essentialism, uh, The Disciplined Pursuit of Doing Less. That was a book that really helped me out as I got busier um, in life, um, just with business and family and everything. Um, but it was really, you know, placing a priority on the on the things that have the highest value. So uh, what that really means is like, again, tackling the hardest task early on. And some of the, th the other things that maybe aren't, you know, um, that important, you know, you gotta, you gotta be able to say no, you gotta learn how to say no. And so what I learned is that, you know, I wanted to be able to, you know, be a people pleaser and do all these things for everyone. But eventually I couldn't 
do the more impactful things because I was, my time and energy was getting sucked in so many different directions for things that really weren't that important. Um, so it was hard to kind of get over that. But once I did, it was like, wow, I can, I can do so much more. I can be so much more impactful. I can help, you know, others in a way that, you know, I just didn't necessarily have the time. And so that was a, again, a really good eye opening book for me about how I want to live my life and where I want to spend my time and learning that it's okay to say no to something that, you know, you just don't think is going to be that, that, you know, high value uh, for you or your family. Yeah. And uh, just to recap there, I mean, obviously think and grow rich uh, thoughts are things and what you think about all day long is what your life becomes. And, you know, I think that's one of the most profound thoughts that, you know, has ever been placed in front of my mind. And it's amazing when you really put that into practice and you really start to plant seeds consciously and let them grow subconsciously, as you mentioned. So uh, I, I just remember learning about the subconscious mind and now continuing to leverage that. And it's absolutely amazing the power of that and then also pruning i mean you're talking about essentialism and saying no to things i mean i know that you know early on in many folks careers you got to say yes to most things so you can get more opportunities you can get more experience but you get to a certain point where you've got to say no i mean is there any big tactics that you've kind of taken away from that in terms of you know pruning or or you know saying hey this is not for me right now yeah. So I think one of the things that kind of the, the revelation I had with, with all this was, you know, there were some things that, um, you know, I had to say no to, but by just focusing on the most important things early on in the morning, what I realized in the afternoon, some of those things I had to say no to, I didn't even have to say no anymore because the person figured out the question because, they, you know, they, they took a little bit of time to, to look at it further that, you know, had I gone and spent time on that, um, in the morning, it would have taken away from something more important. So sometimes a lot of the no's just go away naturally. Or if it's someone that's reaching out and, and you're just like, okay, what are the intentions here? Is this something I want to commit to, you know, just by, you know, thinking about it further or not letting it, um, you know, really take over. I mean, eventually those things just kind of work themselves out. Um, so yeah, so I've seen a big, um, you know, uh, I guess a big influx of my time come back to me because I don't feel guilty if I don't go to an event because I just don't think there's going to be value in it. And I'm not going to take a night out of, you know, for, away from my family for something that it just doesn't seem to really appeal to me right now. Even if someone invited me to it, it's just like, I've got to assess that and make a decision. And when you think about it from the perspective of, you know, your time is your most valuable asset. If, if I'm not going to get something out of something, I have no problem saying, Hey, look, I, I'm busy. I got a lot going on, but you know, this, this is gonna be a family night, you know, or, or something yeah, like, yeah. you know, so it's, it's the ability to get over that. Cause at first I was worried about what people were going to think of me or they're going to be like, Oh, Ryan just doesn't care. And it's not that at all. It's like, I want to save, you know, my time and energy for the, you know, for the work that I can do that's most meaningful to others and, and to myself and my family. And so when I think about it from that perspective, I don't feel bad anymore. Yeah. And I know a lot of us, uh, you know, folks that are high achievers or, or driven or A players or type A or however you want to describe us, you know, it's, hey, we got this fear of missing out. You got the FOMO or you say, well, if I don't go to that, then maybe I miss an opportunity. And, you know, that compounds on itself. And obviously, at the end of the day, we're doing what we're doing to create a quality of life. So remembering that you don't have to say yes to everything and you don't have to fill your schedule to the brim. So there's, there's, there's so much value in that. And um, Brian, what, what would you say is the biggest way that you elevate your life on a daily basis outside of what we've already talked about today? Um, I would say um, I'm going back to just positive outlook, positive attitude. I mean, it's gotten me through the dark days of, you know, of COVID and just dealing with everything, you know, the changes. And, and I think being able to, um, you know, deal with adversity. I've had a lot of things happen in my life that haven't worked out. And, you know, here I am today talking about how I love the life I'm living. And I think you gotta, you know, again, just like a real estate dealer life, you gotta think about it long term that we're always constantly working to get to, you know, a, a place that we want to be, but you got to enjoy, you know, the ups and downs along the way. And, um, I guess maybe the, the last thing I could leave everyone with is, is just, um, you know, you don't going back to the quote, you know, you don't know if you, if you don't try something. So I think just, you know, have a curious mind, 
go out there, make some mistakes. And, and, and you know, if you're going to fail, fail fast, learn what doesn't work so that you can spend more time on the things that, that are working. And if you surround yourself with good people who are doing what you want to do, you'll get there faster and it'll be more fun doing it with someone else. I, I really believe in uh, going back to sports that, you know, just the, the partnership, the teammates, the teamwork that's involved. I mean, it's the same thing in real estate. We're all in one big partnership here. We all want the same goals. We're all striving for the same things. So it's a fun environment when you can create that and be, you know, working with others who share the same vision, the same passion. And, uh, and lastly, if you're out there just, you know, listen to podcasts, blogs, and, and read as much as you can. I mean, that's great. Get educated. That's the number one thing I would say. Uh, but then number two is take some action and, and enjoy the ride. Uh, it, it won't probably go as, as, you know, as, as smooth as you think, but you know, if you get knocked down, get back up and you know, if you take that attitude on life, uh, I think you'll be happy down the road where you end up. Yeah. Dealing with adversity is obviously an amazing way to continue to elevate yourself because look, we're all going to deal with it. But speaking of others, just real quickly, I mean, uh, what would you say is the biggest way that you elevate others around you? So I would say it's with, um, you know, giving back to them, helping educate them on, um, I, I just, maybe some of the things I've learned along the way that I can help save them time from maybe a path that, uh, they were going down that maybe they didn't see and just sharing, you know, real experiences from what I've dealt with and what I've seen. So I think the biggest thing is probably it, it's just the time. I mean, that's what I've tried to free up the most so I can give to others. And, um, you just, I love educating, I, you know, cause I still learn every day from other people. And so I, the knowledge I learn, I try to pass on. And so it feels good when you can collaborate and share. Um, so that's really where I, I think, um, you know, I can make the biggest impact is, is just helping others and, uh, and also sharing, um, I think we all, you know, in this, in this real estate syndication community, I mean, we all have the ability to, to create more awareness around what we're doing. And I think, um, you know, we're just scratching the surface here. And that's the cool part is that we're all in this together and there's just so much good that's going to come out of this long term. And we're going to, you know, impact so many lives in a positive way. And um, just waking up every day that just energizes me to, to want to continue to keep building, keep helping others and uh, keep collaborating, um, you know, with everyone else who's in the industry doing the same thing. Yeah, well, I'm super grateful for you to, you know, share positivity with our audience, with Elevate Nation and sharing so much wisdom today. Um, you know, I know you've really kind of had many mic drop moments throughout the show today, but is there any other parting thoughts or words of wisdom that you share with Elevate Nation today? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> I guess I uh, maybe would leave you with. Uh, oh, let's see. The, the, I, I'm going to go back to probably my my Wayne Gretzky quote. I mean, I just uh, to kind of sum it all up here. You know, you, you miss you know 100% of the shots you don't take, and I, I would say. Um, you know, give yourself the opportunity to, to live life to the fullest, take some risks, take some calculated risk. And I, I think you'll be happy knowing that you tried. Um, even if it doesn't work out, I, I, I'm the type of person that, you know, I'll have regret if I don't try something and it'll eat away at me. So at least if you go out and you give it your, your best effort, you can live with yourself and know that you did everything you could. And um, again, I just think with that kind of attitude and mindset, and if you have a focus and some visualization with what you want in life, you're going to get there. It's just a matter of time. Yeah. Well, you, you certainly are energizing me. You're motivating me to get up off, you know, the, get out of this chair right now and go take some action, make something happen, you know, go out there and take a little bit of risk. I mean, obviously calculated risk with an educated, you know, format and a, a you know, platform there. So, uh, Ryan, I just want to thank you again so much for being on the show. Uh, tell the listeners how they can, you know, reach out and, and learn more about what you do. So, uh, go to McKennaCapital.com if you want to check out our website from there. Um, you know, we, we've tried to provide as much information as we can from an educational standpoint. There's, there's blogs, videos, um, uh, you know, Twitter, all the social sites, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, uh, you know, you can definitely find me there. I'm always happy to chat, connect with others. Um, so that's prob probably the best way to so, yeah, start, start at the website. And uh, we, we try to kind of put everything we can out there to have it in one place for you. Absolutely. That's McKinnaCapital.com. And of course, we'll put links in the show notes for all the social media, of course, the website as well. So you definitely want to engage with Ryan. He's as nice as he is in person as he is on the podcast. I can tell you that. So you definitely Thanks, want Tyler. to engage with him. Absolutely. <laughs> likewise, likewise uh, 
Uh, I appreciate that. If you wanted to say anything else about that, you're, you're, you're totally welcome to. <laughs> no, I was going to say the same. Yeah, you are in person as well. Uh, yeah, just, just very uh, down to earth, great guy. And I'm glad we met. Uh, and I'm glad we're, you know, connected again here. I know we, 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 we've talked a lot since uh, the first meeting and, and getting to this place. So I'm, I'm very thankful for that uh, to have, you know, close confidants and relationships in, in this space. I mean, that's what, that's what makes it uh, special and, and to be able to, to give to others and to help others along the way. I mean, that, that's, that's what gets me up and gets me excited. I agree. That's the exciting thing about our business is that we all just help each other. We all lift each other up and that's the way to last long term. And it's not only a great way to live, but it's the great way to do business. Um, so I, I'm super thankful for that. And thank you for the nice comments. You definitely didn't have to do that. I appreciate that. But um, I want to thank really you for being on the show. I want to thank you for you know showing up and being so genuine. And I just have so much gratitude for that. And obviously, as we mentioned, gratitude is a state of receivership. So obviously, you allowed us to receive the gifts that you brought today. And I just want to encourage Elevate Nation to re-listen to the show because there's so much gold here. You know, if you want financial independence and if you want that holy grail of personal finance, I mean, really, this is where you start this show and, and really talking about vision, talking about putting that into action, you know, dealing with adversity and building a network and playing the long game. I mean, that's really what the show is all about. And I want to encourage you to identify what are your top three key distinctions and what can you do to put them into action immediately? Because really, we all know about the law of diminishing intent, so to speak. You know, it's like you learn something and then over time, you're less likely to take action. So what can you do to take action now? Take action immediately, as well as share with someone else because it's the right thing to do. And also the teacher really is who learns the most. When you share with someone else, you actually anchor in your own understanding, you know, that much more. And you also do the right thing by sharing with someone else. So share this episode. You can either text it to somebody. You can screenshot it. You can post it on social media. Tag Ryan, tag myself, tag your friend who you want to teach about, you know, what we talked about today. So I think there's so much value in that. And at the end of the day, again, you got to take massive action because knowledge is only potential power. Action is really the real power. So with that said, Ryan, thank you again for being on the show today. Thank you, Tyler. I really appreciate you having me on. This was great. Absolutely. Elevate Nation, thank you for tuning in and we'll see you next time. Thank you for listening to Elevate. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to rate, review, subscribe, and pay it forward by sharing with a friend. Most importantly, take this opportunity to elevate your results by taking immediate action on what you learned. For more, visit elevatepod.com.